Okay, everybody, this is Trish Triumphal Sullivan, and we're back with part two of lecture number seven, Ancient Egypt. So let's talk about the pyramids. They're basically colossal sized tomb structures created by Egyptians. Um, the pyramids likely modeled after the Benban, which is a symbol of the cult of Ra, the Egyptian sun god. Some people pronounce that Ray, so you'll hear both Ra and Ray and intended to represent the sun. <clears throat> the construction of pyramids represented a major feat. The limestone blocks used in the creation of pyramids were extraordinarily heavy and had to be transported great distances by thousands of workers. At least, sorry about that, um, at least 18 or, or 118 pyramids have been identified. The earliest known Egyptian pyramids were found at Saquar, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Saquara. The Giza pyramids located near modern Cairo are the most notable and famous. Even today, they are among the largest structures ever built. So this is the location is in Giza, Egypt. And it's the old kingdom, fourth dynasty, uh, 2550 to 2490 BCE. And the materials are cut limestone. Um, so this is the Great Pyramids and the Sphinx. We'll take a look at the Sphinx here. Um, and so the Great Pyramids and the Great Sphinx were massive monuments to the pharaohs Men, uh, Men Kauri, Khufu, and Karafe in the Fourth Dynasty. The Great Pyramid of Khufu was the largest pyramid ever constructed, standing over 480 feet tall. For thousands of years, the Great Pyramid was the tallest human-built structure in the world. The Giza pyramids had a mortuary temple a, uh, and a causeway leading to it, which represented the journey of the Pharaoh's body during, during funerary proceedings. Mortuary temples were situated in the eastern direction towards the sunset. The Great Sphinx was created in the, in the Giza Pyramid Complex around 2500 BCE and carved on location um, in situ, that's what it means, like right there where, where it was sitting, um, from an extremely large piece of limestone. A Sphinx is a hybrid human animal with the body of a lion and the head of a human or deity. The Sphinx was once painted red. Today, there is, some, there is some signs of damage to the face, which may have been the result of vandalism. Um, and that was pretty common. They often would knock the nose off of sculptures uh, during wars to kind of insult the, you know, cut off the nose to spite the face kind of a, a attitude. Um, this is King Men Menkauri and the Queen. Uh, that's located in ancient Egypt. The cult culture is Old Kingdom, 4th Dynasty, 2490 to 2472 BCE. Um, and the materials are gray rock. So this is a high relief sculpture uh, and it depicts the king and likely his queen. There is some dispute over whether the female figure depicts a goddess. Both figures are idealized, and the king is depicted in a classic pharaoh position. One foot is forward, and the fists are aside the body. This sculpture was crafted from a single stone. The legs and arms of the figures were not cut free from the stone matrix. This is, it is likely that the figure was originally painted. This statue may have served a religious purpose and could have been intended to be a vessel for the spirit. Here's the temple of Amun-Ra and the Hippostyle Hall. This is in Karnak, Egypt. It's the New Kingdom. And this is 1550 to 1250 BCE. And the materials are cut sandstone and mud brick. Um, it's centrally located between Thebes and the Nile. The temple complex at Karnak was the main center of religious activity in the New Kingdom, and even today is among the largest religious complexes in the world. Pharaohs continued to add to the complex over time. 
certain areas of the complex were likely only accessible to royals, priests, and members of a higher socioeconomic class. The temple of Amun-Ra was devoted to Amun-Ra, uh, who became the chief god in the Egyptian world and was built around 1550 BCE. The temple had an axial layout that was associated with the four cardinal directions, so those the main four directions, north, south, east, west. The hippos, the the hypostyle hall was likely built around 1250 BCE. A hypostyle uh, was a column supporting a ceiling. Columns drew from naturalistic motifs represented and represented lotuses and papyrus reeds. Today, the Temple of Amun-Ra and Hypostyle Hall are in poor state or in a poor state of preservation compared to other Egypt, Egyptian temple complexes. The mortuary temple at ha Hashepsut, and that's in Luxor, Egypt, the New Kingdom, 1473 to 1458 BCE, and this was built of sandstone and red granite. Um, the mortuary temple of Hatch. Hatch <laughs> this is a hard one for me. Hatch Epsut was carved from the side of a cliff and replicated the horizontal and vertical angles and lines found in the cliffs. The temple consists of three terraces surrounded by columns that were planted as gardens in ancient times with trees. The temple was highly adorned with reliefs and artwork celebrating Hats Epsut. This is noteworthy because it represents perhaps the first major time the accomplishments of a female leader were celebrated in a major work in art history. The temple had over 200 statues throughout its complex with a noteworthy set of 10 red granite statues. So here's Hats Hepsut. And this is Akhen Aten, Nefertiti, and three daughters. This is a location um, in Karnak and New Kingdom, Araman, Aram, Am Arna period. Uh, 1353 to 1335 BCE is made of limestone. Uh, so this work is a limestone relief and it's a low relief, so it's a bas relief, right? Showing Akhentaton, Nefertiti, and their three daughters. Nefertiti's throne has symbols of Upper and Lower Egypt. The carved sun represents the god Aten and is believed that the relief was originally painted. This relief is notable because it showcases the transition of Egypt to, to monotheism. Akhentaton Ak changed the Egyptian state religion from worship of Amun to Aten. This scene shows a degree of domesticity and intimacy between Akhenaten, Nefertiti, their daughters, and their new god, Aten, that was uncommon, especially in depictions of royalty. Up until this time, the, up, up until that time, the shift in state religion created a more, a more artist experimentation or created more artist experimentation during this period. Tutankhamun's innermost coffin and mask. So that's the Valley of the Kings in Egypt, the New Kingdom, Arm Arna period, 1323 BCE, and it's gold with inlay of enamel and semi-precious stones. Um, I think these semi-precious stones are mostly or lapis. Um, Tutankhamun's tomb was discovered in 1922 by the British archaeologist Howard Carter. Intact. This was a notable discovery as most pharaoh tombs were raised over the centuries, or raided over the centuries. <laughs> This discovery was thus noteworthy to the art and historical community. The Valley of the Kings, this is a photo of the Valley of the Kings where Tutankhamun was buried, 
um, his innermost coffin, there were three coffins actually in the tomb of Tutankhamun. The innermost coffin was made of solid gold and weighs over 500 pounds. The coffin is around 6.5 feet in length and contains protective motifs and symbols of power. His death mask is also solid gold with inlays of semi-precious stones, including lapis lazuli. It was found directly over Tutankhamun's body, located beneath the innermost coffin. It features a false beard, elaborate headdress, and motifs of cobras and vultures. The last, the last judgment of Hu Nefer. This is located in the Valley of the Kings, the New Kingdom, Amarna period, 1275 BCE, and it's a painted papyrus scroll. Um, this is the Last Judgment of Hu Nefer, and this it's a painted papyrus scroll. It was part of the Book of the Dead, a book that was often buried with pharaohs and others and contained guidance on how to travel safely to the afterlife, as well as spells, prayers, and charms. Hu Nefer was a scribe during the 19th dynasty, and this scroll shows a narrative of his journey to the afterlife. The scroll depicts the weighing of Hunafer's heart by Anubis, the god of embalming and funerary tradition, <clears throat> against the feather of Mat, which symbolized truth. If his heart was not deemed to be true, Hunafer would have been devoured by Amit, the crocodile-lion-hippo hybrid, and would not continue into the afterlife. However, since his heart is deemed true, Hunafer is led into the afterlife. This scroll combines hieroglyphic, hieroglyphics and visual art. It is noteworthy as, ex, as an example of re, Egyptian religious tradition and belief and artistic conventions. So that's it for the Egyptian lecture um, for Ancient Egypt, lecture number seven for art history, which is art 1A. Um, we'll see you in next lecture.